Amen. For the glory of our God. And we now walk in his holiness, in his glory, in every place that we go. And we've got to understand our battle isn't with flesh and blood. Our battle is with the enemy. But it's time that the enemy stops silencing the church. Whether it be through the government, whether it be through other authorities, we are the church of Jesus Christ, and we will stand for the glory of our God, and we will declare his praise in every place that we go. You know, hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and just as the palms that were weighed are a sign of victory, I just want you to stand to your feet, give me a good wave. If you have a palm or you've got palm, and just... Lord, we declare your victory. We declare that we shine with your light. We declare that you are exposing all darkness and bringing forth holiness and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. a shout, everybody cry out, raise your voice, shout out a noise, dance and dance of joy. We are the redeemed, we are the ones who are free, and we belong to Jesus. by a king only freedom remains for the people of god yeah the people of god we're living in a kingdom that will never end we're living in a power that defeated sin so come on come on let your praise begin jesus is alive and he's coming again now is the time for the people to rise lift up a shout everybody cry out raise your voice shout out a noise dance and dance of joy we are the redeemed we are the ones who are free we belong to jesus
glorious God. I mean, we got the victory, people. Stop walking around saying, God, won't you do something? God, you've got to do something. God, can't you see what's going on? Oh, I guarantee you God sees a whole lot more than what we could ever, like, think. And he's got a plan, and he wants his people to get on with his plan and stop focusing on what's wrong, what's not going right. Our God is moving all the time. Hallelujah. He is moving all the time. I am so thankful. And, you know, it's just about us giving it all to him and trusting our God. My confidence is in Jesus. He already paid the price. He has already destroyed all. Everybody say all. All. The works, the works. of the enemy. Of the enemy. Uh, he may, the enemy may be stirring stuff up, and you may like, it don't look like it. Well, you know what? Get your eyes in a different place. Yeah. We're seated with Woo! Christ in heavenly places. That's where I'm going to see it from. Amen? Amen. Woo! Everybody say victory. Yeah, victory. Yeah. truth, but all I found was you, my God, I'll only ever give my all. Jesus, we're living for your name, never be ashamed of you. Our praise and all we are today, take, take, take it all, take, take, take it all. Run into the one who heals the blind, follow in the shining light. In your hands of power to save the world in my life. Run into the one who heals the blind. Follow in the shining light. In your hands of power to save the world in my life. Jesus, we're living for your name. We'll never be ashamed of you. Our praise and all we are today. Take, take, take it all, take, take, take it all. Jesus, we're living for your name. Never be ashamed of you. Our praise and all we are today. Take, take, take it all, take, take, take it all. Take, take, take it all. Woo! Yes, Lord. Lord, we give it all to you, knowing that, Father God, your plans and your purposes are perfect. They're sure. They're to give us a hope. They're to give us a future. And I thank you, Lord God, that that time has come for the church to rise up, the people of God to rise up, the silent majority to speak the word of the living God unashamedly. Hallelujah. There is a spirit that the enemy has put out and has tried to put out upon the church of shame. That, well, you just need to be loving. Well, yes, you do, praise God. Please be loving. (laughs) But they take it and they twist it that if we speak the heart and the truth of God's word, that's not being loving. Oh, that is the best love. His truth is the most overwhelming love that there can be. And I understand when Jesus spoke the truth, people got offended. Our heart is never to offend people. But we need to understand that truth does offend people. And that's, although that's not our intention, is it going to keep us from speaking the truth? I hope not. I hope not. I'm seeing much of the church be silent. But we have the truth of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And yes, that means that we get to change. You see, God is not who we say he is. God is who his word says he is. And that is what we have to stay focused on 
all the days of our lives. Amen? So it is time. Hallelujah. We're taking a stand for whom we believe in. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Jesus. And because we got Jesus, we got everything. So don't you dare let the enemy come in and try to convince you that you're lacking something. Listen to what I'm saying. Because in Christ we have everything. But the enemy would like us to focus on what we think we don't have. Okay, And we put our emphasis on, well, if I had this, then I'd have more. Or I'd, have, I'd feel love if I had this person change or do this. I'd have, 
If I had a better job, then I'd have provision. You know, that's the enemy wants to keep you in that place so that you keep speaking in agreement with him instead of speaking in agreement with what God says. God is my supernatural provider. I have all I need. He has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. My cup overflows. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like at the moment. The truth of the word will bring forth the reality of the promise of Almighty God. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I just love my Jesus. Amen. Anybody else with me here? I just choose, I choose to believe him. You know, I choose. And, and I'm not saying it's always easy because, you know, we're in the flesh. Unfortunately, we can get carnal. I mean, think about it. What's being carnal is being led by our five senses, right? Is being moved by more by what we see or by what we hear or by what we feel. And it's so vitally important, you know, that we know that we're in the beloved. We know that we're accepted. We know that we're loved. It's really nice when other people love us too. <laughs> it does feel good, but irrelevant of what we're feeling from other people, God loves us, and we have the love of God. It doesn't matter if there's, there's difficulties going on. I'm not trying to get the joy of the Lord. Talk to me. Somebody, please. I believe that according to the word of God, I already have the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. What am I choosing to come into agreement with? Come on. Read your Bibles, hallelujah. It's good stuff in there. Don't just read it, choose to believe it. Oh, that rhymes. Don't just read it, choose to believe it. Hallelujah. I mean, that's what we just need to do. Just take God at his word and believe what he has to say. Well, I know this is very unusual because we don't always do this, and it is Palm Sunday. And I'm actually going to share a scripture from the triumphal entry <laughs> of Jesus coming. I'm usually like all over the charts. But, you know, he took me and this morning in Matthew chapter 21. And Jesus is coming in uh, to, to the city. And I mean, the place erupts with praise. I mean, they are just magnifying God. They're putting their coats on the ground. They're putting palm branches on the ground and they're worshiping him and then all of a sudden there comes some people who they have some authority I mean they do you can say it's God-given authority and they come to him and they say tell them to be quiet do you hear what they're saying and Jesus pretty much responds he doesn't respond like we would oh yeah oh yeah Oh, be quiet, people. You're offending people. We better shush, shoo. We don't want to offend anybody. We're living in an age, okay? What did Jesus do? He didn't do that. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If they're quiet, the very rocks will cry out in praise to my holy name. Wow. Go, God, go. So I don't know about you. Years ago, Pastor Scott wrote a song. Um, he's not going to let the rocks cry out his praise. Come on. I'm not going to be quiet and let creation cry out the praises of God and miss out on it. I'm going to cry out the praises of Almighty God. Amen? Oh, okay. Well, that's good stuff, isn't it? Well, then, I, I just love it because right after that, Jesus goes, you know, well, actually, it's kind of the next day. But anyway, he, he goes in and he cleanses the temple, okay? I mean, <laughs> he goes in and he is reclaiming his father's house, okay? Because 
robbers and thieves were taking advantage of people who were coming with hearts repentant to receive God's forgiveness. And, you know, because at that time there had to be a sacrifice and Jesus was getting ready to become the once and for all sacrifice for all mankind and for their sins. So he's coming in and he's pretty much driving those people out of the temple and saying, my father's house is to be a house of prayer. That means communion with God. Don't make prayer a religious thing. Prayer is communing and talking to God. Prayer is not complaining to God about your situation. Listen to what I'm saying. Y'all love me, right? <laughs> I know it's easy to let God know how bad things are. Let God know what your spouse has done or what your coworker has done or what your boss has done as if God didn't, like, doesn't already see it. You know, so we spend a good portion of our prayer time letting God know how bad we have it and complaining about it. I'm just being real here, okay? Anybody else? can get, get yourself caught up in it, as if he doesn't already see the situation, all right? Instead, why don't we come into agreement with what God wants to do and the promises and begin to declare his heart over that and tell him, you know, God, I know how it looks. Man, thank you that you're just, you're changing my perspective, Lord. I know I'm seated with you in heavenly places. I know you're seeing this all from a different perspective. Thank you. You're bringing my perception, my perspective into a right place so that I can come into agreement and I can begin to agree with you and release things in the earth. Amen? So then, okay, so it cleanses the te temple. And um, the very next thing, and let's go to verse, this is chapter 21 in Matthew and let's start with verse 14, please. Matthew 21, verse 14. It says, Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And what did he do? Oh, praise the Lord, he healed them. Our God is a healing God. No matter what it is, no matter what you got, no matter what the physician says, there's no hope for you, there's no cure for you. You need to look at them and say, well, it's a good thing I got Jesus because he's got a cure. He's got a healing. Hallelujah. He is my great physician. I'm telling you, you need to just stop going with what, what's being said over you, what's being spoken, what you see, what you're reading. Uh, and, okay. Oh, Lord Jesus, keep me focused. Hallelujah. I understand. I, I, I can get on Google, you know, and like this, a symptom or, or that type of thing. Please be careful. All right? I mean, you get on there and you're like, oh, I've got this symptom. Of this. Oh, my God. You know, before we know it, we're being moved more by what we just read than we are in the promises of God. So we have to make sure that we're, we're getting God's promises above what we're reading or hearing. I'm not saying, you know, okay, just, just ignore whatever's being said. It's just when you go there, don't make that the final authority. Make God's word the final authority. It's just like, huh, well, that's interesting. Well, I'm not going to focus on that because the symptom is a lying symptom from the pit of hell because who is the author of sickness? Okay, let's do it. What? Christianity 101. God good enemy bad resist the enemy <laughs> receive what god gives okay so we are told to submit to the things of god and we're also told to resist the enemy okay i'm focused now hallelujah back here you thought i forgot okay verse 15 and i find I, does anybody find things perplexing in our day and age. Well, Jesus had some, some things. I mean, he had to just sit there and be like, what is wrong with you people? You know, verse 15. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things, saw the awesome, wonderful, healing power of God, they rejoiced, right? I mean, you'd have to be a, a numbskull not to, right? 
Uh, that's not what the word said, does it? Is it up there? <sighs> Here's what they did. When they saw all the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. They were indignant. One, one uh, Bible version says that that word indignant means that they saw it as evil. <sighs> they saw the lame walking, the blind seeing as something being evil. And we think what's going on in today is something new to God. Like this never happened. They did it with Jesus. Okay? So we are living in a day and age where they're taking what's good, what's of God, and calling it evil, calling it wrong, and taking what's diabolically evil and wrong and saying it's okay. That's messed up. It is time to take a stand. Hallelujah. And we're the church of Jesus Christ, and there's more with us than there than are against us. Don't you ever feel like, well, I'm the only one. No, you're not. We got Jesus and we got all of the host of the armies of heaven on our side. Hallelujah. When we speak the word, the word of God goes forth and it accomplishes what our God has set it to accomplish every time. Woo. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. Thanks, Jesus, for that one. So, and then Jesus comes back because they're like, they're indignant and they're like, tell him to be quiet. Verse 16, and he said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise, okay? And it goes on in Psalms, it tells us, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have silenced the enemy. So when we praise our God, when we declare his reign, his rulership, his glory, his, we magnify him, guess what we're doing? We're throwing confusion into the camp of the enemy, and we are shutting the enemy up. Hallelujah. I like that. I like, I'll do that all day long. I will do that all day long. Are you with me? Woo! Let's stand to our feet. Let's worship and praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes, Jesus. Right, we're good. <laughs> Clap their hands. 
be shaken and he will never be removed from his kingship from his lordship it's not going to happen amen? amen so we don't have to fret about anything because we know who our God is amen and we just have to stay focused upon the truth of his word and we just need to continue to stand upon the truth of his word and when we stand upon the truth of his word, those storms may come and may beat against the truth of the word of God. In the end, that house, our house, will stand Amen. because we're built upon the rock of yes. Jesus Christ. Amen? Woo! Well, turn around and praise the Lord and tell somebody, I love you, but Jesus loves you more. <laughs> 